Sorry, sir. Can I ask you to take a slight step to your left for me, please? Thank you very much. <laughs> That's perfect. Right, let's have a little look at this. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the newly fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wandering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his coursers they came. And he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with the sleigh full of toys, and St Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pouring of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how oh, they twinkled, his dimples how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth. And the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump and a right jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him, in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings and turned with a jerk and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. <laughs> Thank you. Is that all right? Can I do it again? Yeah. I was terribly nervous. <laughs> I was like absolutely <laughs> terrified. I'm nailing this. <laughs> <laughs> The Actors' Benevolent Fund was founded in 1882 by Henry Irving, one of the foremost actors of his generation, with a promise to help those in the entertainment profession who had fallen on hard times. Today, the fund remains true to that promise, and during the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, our work has never been more important as we try to relieve some of the distress and difficulty so many of our colleagues are facing. Thanks to the kindness of our supporters, including our patron, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales, the fund is playing its part to help. I hope you enjoy our reading of the poem, Twas the Night Before Christmas, and I thank you for your support. <laughs>